Okay. Hello, my name is Harriet Patton. I am the president of Meacham Park Neighborhood Improvement Association. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the 2023 Martin Luther King presentation. My name is Bum Young Kim, and I am the treasurer for the Meacham Park Neighborhood Improvement Association. Along with Harriet, I want to welcome you to our 2023 Martin Luther King Jr. celebration, where we have members of Meacham Park, along with family and friends, share their thoughts and talents about how MLK has inspired all of us. We will also introduce to you the 2023 recipients of the Meacham Park Scholarship Fund. I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you for your contribution towards the scholarship fund, which allows our young people to pursue a college degree and further the dreams of Martin Luther King Jr. We also want to especially thank the generosity of Tim Cunningham and all of you who made his concert possible to raise funds for this scholarship. If you haven't had a chance yet to contribute and would like to, use the link in the video description below to do so. Also, Feel free to use the timestamps in the timeline at the bottom of this video to skip to any of the corresponding presentations. So without further ado, we hope you enjoy this celebration. Greetings and salutations. My name is Chaplain Edwin Coleman, originally from Meacham Park, Missouri. It was August 28, 1963, when Dr. Martin Luther King delivered his iconic I Have a Dream speech. And although the March on Washington was intended for better jobs and equality for all, he challenged his audience to avoid going back to business as usual. He declared, hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. He said, in the process of gaining our rightful place, we must not be guilty of wrong deeds. So I stand before you today to dramatize some shameful conditions and to remind us of this one truth. We cannot do it alone. From 1963 to the brink of 2023, the citizens of Meacham Park and Kirkwood, Missouri still need to find God's way to pray together, to come together, to work together, and to stay together. 60 years later, segregation and discrimination still exist in our city. Sixty years later, the pathway from poverty to prosperity is not defined. Sixty years later, the Declaration of Independence is still just a promissory note for some who it falls heir to and others who are victims of it. Sixty years later, the vault of opportunity in Kirkwood, Missouri, and still reserved for some and restricted for others. Sixty years later, the promises of democracy in our city are just that, promises. Sixty years later, justice in the city of Kirkwood still seems to side with the privilege and less with the poor. Sixty years later, the rights of some citizens mean more than the rights of other citizens in our community. Sixty years later, the city of Kirkwood still needs to find God's way to pray together, to come together to work together, and to stay together. Sixty years later, Dr. King would still say it this way, we must not seek to satisfy our thirst for equality and justice by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. We must forever conduct the struggle of equality and justice on a high plane of dignity and discipline. We must not allow the legitimate discontent of a few to be the final destination of this great community we call Kirkwood. We cannot do this work alone. and We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all human beings are created equal. So citizens of Meacham Park and Kirkwood, hear me when I say we cannot do this work alone. I solicit your prayers today. Join us. Join the Meacham Park Neighborhood Improvement Association. We cannot do this work alone. We need to learn how to pray together, come together, work together, and for the sake of our children and the generation to come, we need to learn how to stay together. Under the direction of Sister Harriet Patton, 
as we seek the ways and opportunities to show acts of mercy and kindness in our community. Join us as we strive to build a better community for our children. Join us as we become more active in our children's education. Join us as we become more visible and vigilant at the council, city council meetings. Join us as we become more responsible in our homes and more resourceful in our community. Join the Meacham Park Neighborhood Improvement Association because in God's eyesight, all lives matter. God bless you and be encouraged. Hi, my name is Harper Opaleke. I go to Robinson Elementary School. You're broken down and tired of living life on a merry-go-round. And you can't find the fire, but I see it in you, so we gon' walk it out and move mountains. We can walk it out and move. Mountains and I'll rise up, I'll rise like the day, I'll rise up, I'll rise unafraid, I'll rise up, and I'll do it a thousand times again for you. to breathe and I know you feel like dying but I promise we'll take the world to its feet and move mountains bring you to its feet and move mountains and I'll rise up I'll rise like the day I'll in spite of the ache, I'll rise up And I'll do it a thousand times again For you, for you, for you, for you, for you. All we need, all we need is for that we have each other, and for that we have each other, and we will rise, we will rise, we will rise, oh, oh, we will rise, and I'll rise up, I'll rise like the day, I'll rise up in spite of the end. I'll rise a thousand times again. Well, hello, my name is Jeremy Mapp, and I am the Executive Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the Kirkwood School District. Uh, I'm very glad to have this role, uh, new to this role this year, and be in our community uh, over here at the Turner Building in Meacham Park. Um, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to connect with the community through some of the different things that we do and that my office does to connect um, whether it be heart-to-heart -heart tutoring or uh, the event that we had in the fall or early years fun fest that we plan on having again in the spring to really connect with our community here in Meacham um, and really make sure that we continue to provide some equitable outcomes for our students particularly uh, at the early childhood level and early on in education and so we're really grateful to be so close and to really think about how we can do that work moving forward. Um, I'm really grateful to talk about uh, MLK. Uh, it is always a special day for me. Uh, growing up, um, I would often go downtown with my father. We would march uh, through the streets uh, and down to the old courthouse um, along with community members. And it was just, it was definitely a piece of my childhood that I remember and I cherish very much. Um, in addition, I, I, my mom I actually grew up in Memphis, Tennessee, was born and raised in Memphis, Tennessee. And so I, Throughout my years growing up, I've always had affinity for Memphis and really um, specifically MLK's mountaintop speech, which was his final speech given in, in his life. And so um, I actually spent some time in college, I actually spent time and I memorized a, a portion of that speech 
um, for, for a class, a psychology class that I had. And so I, I've always had an affinity for MLK, um, even as far back as when I was a youngster. Um, I actually, again, that speech, he, he'd gone to Memphis, um, actually, um, because he was trying to support and, and have, uh, stand with the sanitation workers there in Memphis, Tennessee. And so, um, I remember as a kid, I actually, that's what I wanted to do is I wanted to be a sanitation worker because I remembered that speech. I remembered the impact that it had on those people and on the community. And, and that was just a very important thing to me. Um, and I remember a piece of the speech that I, that I, that was most impactful for me. Um, you know, he talked about, he said, you know, a lot of times people think about, you know, what will happen to me in the situation? What's the impact that it will have on me? Why, how will this impact affect me? Um, and he said, he said, he talked about in the speech, he said, but the fact of the matter is, if I do not stop to help these people, what will happen to them? That, that was his question in, in thinking about sanitation workers. And so as we do this work in our community for our students and for our kids, uh, especially here in Meacham Park, um, I really value the importance of, you know, what will happen if we do not. And so really sticking to that uh, and making that be a big portion of how and why we do the things we do for our kids each and every day. So I'm grateful to be here, grateful to be in this community, and, and I look forward to seeing you all throughout the year. Have a great one. The dream that will live on from death. I had a dream that only my paper bag colored brothers and sisters would listen to. The people that were different in color and attitude would turn their cheeks because they thought that I was doing this for five minutes on a network. I tried to feed my people with the way it should be, but you continue to give them this stuff. This stuff that feed them with pollution that so slowly blind them and slowly hid their eyes from everything that I have dreamed to say and hope will stay. My dream wasn't something that I slept on. I rose up and let the world know that we, were, we are worth it. I rose up to let the world know that we are worth it. The white world was so anxious to meet me, but so afraid to ask me a question. So afraid to ask because they thought that if I answered, my black words would rub off on their white tongues. With God on my side, I pressed on to believe that what I dreamed would come true. Considerate, I tried to make the painful thoughts. Considerate, I tried to take the painful thoughts away. Even though slavery was over and the body was free. I still felt that we were enslaved in the mind, bruised and battered, jailed and convicted, shushed by the hand, threatened by the man. Please, I say, silently my people pray. To the promised land we ran, to Alabama we swam. We ran to a dead end, a dead end that was where we were supposed to begin. Um, my name is Shannon Moore and I'm in the 10th grade. When I hear Martin Luther King's name, I'm inspired by the man that he is and that how he taught us to always follow our dreams and that it's like, and it's so inspiring to know that it was that one black man that allowed all of us to like be equal to this day. It impacts me because I know that he's the reason why I can go to a mostly white school and to know that there's some people that look like me and there's some people that don't look like me and to know that we're all here for the same reason and to learn the same thing. Had to strike, magnifying the contributions of the first 12 generations of African Americans. A single black strike on the American flag is a symbol of how we Made America great. See, quick. Time to get your facts all straight. Someone who really made America great. Because we made America great. We made America great. We made America great. Get your facts all straight. We made America great. We made America great. We made America great. Get your facial straight. Our credit is taken. 
Well, they've been mistaken. They think we don't know? Take a look, I'm awake. The truth that you're hiding is no longer hit. The facts I'ma tell you is about to be given. They built a country using slaves on the land by claiming a man with shovel in hand without pay labor. Things would have been different. We're talking a whole nother world that we're living. So we'll hype the strike, and the strike is a fight for our lives. Turn the movement, keep it moving. Cause we made America great. We made America great. We made America great. Get your face on straight. We made America great. We made America great. We made America great. Get your facts on straight. We made America great. We made America great. We made America great. Get your facts on straight. We made America great. We made America great. We made America great. Get your facts on straight. Yeah, we made America great. We made America great. We the ones who put the weight of the world in our back so that they can have food on the plate. We made America great. Why is this up for the bait? We live in the world create. This can't be a fate. It's time to declare an emergency in that state. Before it's too late, just take a look all around us. We've been as late as they found us. We've been as on the ground up. It's not enough. This is a country that we trying to make. This is our credit that they try to take. This is our time to make the earthquake. Cause simple forgotten it be a mistake. Cause we made America great. We made America great. We made America great. Get your facts on straight. We made America great. We made America great. We made America great. Get your facts on straight. We made America great. We made America great. We made America great. Get your facts on straight. We made America great. We made America great. We made America great. Get your facts on straight. Quick. Hi, my name is Jane DeBerkey. I was one of the winners of the Kirkwood Human Rights Commission essay contest. And my essay is surrounding climate change and how that impacts human rights. Um, sort of with MLK, he, you know, had a big focus on human rights. And in order for everyone to have equal human rights, we must first address climate change. And so that's kind of what my essay surrounds. The loss of human rights due to natural disasters caused by climate change. In Kentucky this year, thousands of people became homeless in one night because of a devastating tornado. I asked myself, why? What caused this destruction? And then I learned about a vicious cycle that could become the downfall of the world. I learned that climate change leads to an increase in the number and severity of natural disasters. These disasters cause human displacement, and this displacement results in the loss of basic human rights of access to shelter, food, and clean water, making climate change the most important human rights issue of this generation. The cause of the devastating Australian bushfires of 2020 has been considered to climate change. Has the cause of devastating of the devastating Australian bushfires of 2020 has been connected to climate change. In late 2019 to early 2020, the Australian landscape was scarred and scorched due to raging fires. With the increase of Earth's temperature, the probability of a fire increased by 30%, and the intensity of heat in fires like the Australian bushfires is 10 times more likely to occur than in 1900. Our warming globe causes fires to erupt. As fires continue to increase in intensity in dry areas like Australia, people will be forced to move to escape. Australian fires in 2020 alone caused an estimated 65,000 people to move and destroyed around 3,100 homes. The humans displaced by natural disasters face the consequences of climate change. They lose their homes as well as reliable sources of food and water. The loss of these needs violates a person's human rights. Americans consider Hurricane Katrina as one of the worst disasters in U.S. history, and it could have been prevented. In 1900, the flood elevations of Katrina would have been 15 to 60 percent, 15 to 60 percent lower than when it occurred in 2005. Greenhouse gas emissions warm the ice cap, which causes the sea level to rise. With a lower sea level, Hurricane Katrina would have been less intense and the, the devastation caused by it would have been prevented. 
Hurricane Katrina caused a mass permanent human displacement. The hurricane moved over 200,000 people from the Gulf Coast region, where the hurricane hit, to Texas, Washington, D.C., Georgia, and Florida. The relocation resulted in a loss of homes, and without stable shelter, food and clean water are much harder to obtain. People need reliable sources of food, water, and shelter to function in society. Massive hurricanes caused by climate change take away a human's right to the resources people need to survive. Fires and hurricanes aren't the only natural disasters causing human displacement as a result of climate change. Flooding increased drastically with the warming globe. At the end of the century, flooding increased by 45%. As heat made by humans continues to increase and circulate around the globe, ice claps begin to melt and water levels rise. With rising water levels comes floods. Floods destroyed the Karatet Islands and Oceania. What once were beautiful islands that people lived on are now submerged in seawater. The once drinkable water is now too salinated to drink, and people on the island had to move. Each person has a right to safe water and a stable home. Floods like those on the Karatet Islands take away these rights. Without shelter and safe drinking water, people cannot survive. The loss of shelter and water due to flooding is a violation of access to these fundamental rights. Humans have the right to shelter, food, and water. These rights are threatened by natural disasters, causing the displacement of human populations across the globe. Climate change is the root of this issue. Climate change must be addressed in order to prevent the frequency and severity of natural disasters, which will protect and preserve humans' rights to live safely in their homes, their rights to clean water and adequate food sources. To provide each human with these basic needs, climate change must be stopped. I am Kelvin Rhymes. Uh, I go to Kirkwood High School and I play, I've been playing basketball for the past three years that I've been to Kirkwood. Um, I'm still kind of like new to the district because I came sophomore year and Kirkwood High School it was a nice place with a lot of nice people and I got comfortable pretty quick and a lot of nice teachers and a lot of positive energy. Hi, my name is Genesis. I am the class of 2023 of Kirkwood High School. Uh, I'm a part of the BACC, which is Black Achievement Culture Club, and I am also a part of the BACC Step Club, which we are performing during uh, basketball high school games. I also am on the track team, and I also am a captain of the hurdles uh, team on the, on the squad. Tyler Johnson, and uh, I don't do any activities at Kirkwood High School. Uh, I applied to TSU, I applied to Clark, and I applied to Morgan State, and I'm just hoping to get in one. And I'm um, also hoping to get a basketball scholarship to any school sports management. I am attending the University of Kentucky. Um, they recruited me for long jump and hurdles. Um, I'm undecided right now, but I'm, I'm considering linguistics. Um, Clark Atlanta, NCAT, uh, Tennessee State University, in Texas Southern, as of right now, uh, chemical engineering. Uh, it means to me that like he like just stood up for his people and kind of helped a lot of people and kind of helped the future of the, like things that's going on with the world and the colored people and the non-colored people and just helped everything like kind of get situated and like made it kind of more safer for us. Well actually to me he was a very great leader and he was not as violent as some of the leaders are in the past So, because I'm not a violent person so I looked up to him because um, we kind of correlate into that and how he progressed his leadership and decided to become and see different parts of the history where he needed to have some acts of violence but not full acts of violence onto things. As same as me, I don't like to get mad or anything, so that related to me well. I feel like he means a lot, because he like paved the way for uh, like people of color to be able to do things with other races, especially like go to school and learn and stuff. It's played out pretty well, because uh, with Kirkwood being like a majority white school, black people going there is like a good thing, because we get a good education. 
go to school and stuff. Uh, I'd like to say a big thanks for the uh, scholarship. It means a lot. Yes, I'd like to say thank you to them for um, giving me this scholarship. And which I'm shocked because I didn't know my name was out there to the organization. So I'd like to thank them for giving me the chance to be on this video as well as get my name out there a little more.